Oh, uh, merciful and gracious Holy Father, we thank you again for what you've already brought to our attention. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Heavenly Father. We know, as we have just sung, you have done so much for us. You've gone through all the pain, all the injury, all the insult, all because you wanted to redeem us. And what are we doing in our life? What are we doing in our uh, desire to also save you? Help us so that through your Holy Spirit and because of the blood that you've already shed for us on Calvary's cross, make it possible so that we would also do something for you, do something in terms of obedience, in terms of uh, understanding, in terms of considering all that you have already established in your Holy Word, so that we will study your Word, we would understand what you are telling us and all the advantages and the benefits that you've given to us because of the love that you have for us. Help us so that we may also respond to your word and not uh, to hear it, but then to turn our eyes, our head on to a different direction. Help us to repent because we know we have sinned. But you have said that you are already waiting. You are knocking on the door of our hearts so that we may open our doors so that you may come in and be with us and fellowship with us and grant us the blessings that we need. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the provision you've already made for us and we know that as you have already said that we're two or three are gathered in your name, your word is already established, you are with us. And so we are believing that the words that we are going to hear uh, will be all from you, from your Holy Spirit, who will implant your word in, in our heart so that it will bear fruit of 100% on over. We know you've done it all. And for those who have already worshipped you, those who are going to be worshipping you, and those who are now doing it, Heavenly Father, we pray that all of us will be on the same level of understanding your word, so that as we hear your word, deliverances will be uh, coming to us, and all the things that we haven't had in the past, all the answers to our prayers, all the requests that we put in, all the praises that we have been giving to you, will all be because you have done it all for us. And so as we commit ourselves to hearing your word, we pray that the fruit that we will be able to bear will be because we are not just going to hear it, we are going to share it, we are going to let others to know what you brought to our attention so that others who, who may not have the same level of understanding, the same level of faith, the same level of salvation will be able to receive your word and from, your, uh, from that word, they will hear, they will be able to also share the same and that it will bear fruit in their life. As we thank you for this moment, we ask that you remove any hindrance, any disturbance, any wandering of heart, anything that may uh, hinder us from hearing your word so that we will be as uh, Mary did uh, in the um, gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, where we are told that Mary sat at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ to listen to what was uh, being said, and she was not uh, distracted with all the food, or oh, let's make this food, or let's make that, or let's get this. She was only interested in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we pray that we would also be interested in your word, in your Holy Spirit, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in you, Heavenly Father, so that at the end, we will be able to receive all the answers to our prayers and at the end be in your kingdom uh, forever all of this we ask and we believe that you've already answered them for to jesus christ our lord amen, amen. we are going to hear god's word given to us in revelation chapter 5 we are going to read the whole chapter. Revelation 5. We'll stand up to hear God's word, please. Revelation 5, verse 1. Two. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming to with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll to loose its seals? And no one on earth or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much, because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll 
or two look at it. This is what one of the elders said to me. Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, had prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb, as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into the world. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seal. You who were slain, now redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders, and the number of them were ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands and thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom. And strength and honor is the glory and blessing. And every creature which is, which, is in the hap, which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the twenty four elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Amen. All right, I will read uh, the next uh, verse, which is uh, what uh, the topic we are on, uh, which is the corrupted church. So uh, we'll keep standing while I read that uh, so that we can all uh, see that. So we are reading this time uh, Revelation 2 18 and uh, 19, and I'll explain uh, why. Uh, what we are reading so all right so we are reading again this time revelation 2 18 to 29 which it's about uh the corrupted church at Thyatira. so starting from 18 and on and unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write these things said the son of god who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire and his feet are like fine brass i know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first notwithstanding i have a few things against thee because thou suffered uh, the that woman jezebel which called herself a prostitute uh, sorry who um that, of course, well, it's uh, that, uh, starting 20 again. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffered that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her a space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her with unto a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will keep, kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which saturate the reins and hearts and i will give unto every one of you according to your works 24 but unto you i say and uh, unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of satan as they speak i will put upon you none other burden uh, but 
that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule the, uh, them with a rod of iron, and uh, as uh, the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive of my father, and I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear that or uh, what the Spirit said unto the, ch uh, the churches. Amen. 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 All right, we may be seated, please. So, we are on the fourth church, <clears throat> which is the corrupted uh, church at Thyatira. And while we have already heard uh, what uh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, gave to them and uh, as a warning, and at the same time we know uh, what the comments are on uh, that church. Uh, the church at Thyatira had become corrupted because uh, they knew God's word, but then they allowed uh, ungodly teachings, they allowed things that were not supposed to be done to be done, and so they had become uh, corrupted. And uh, so while we deal with um, the church as it is, that, oh, the church had become corrupted, uh, we should now, because we've already read about what happened uh, to the church and why they allowed the woman uh, to be leading them and to be corrupting them and to be uh, making them do all those things that they were not supposed to be doing. And so uh, they were already uh, corrupted. But then the question is that what made them to be corrupted? It was all about allowing the world, allowing uh, the things that God had said. And so as we think about the corrupted church, God is not talking about people who are not in the church. This is talking about people who are in the church. So while we may use the topic and say that uh, the church at Tartara was uh, corrupted, uh, we know that uh, if we come to the, world in, uh, to the modern world uh, we live in today, so many things have uh, become corrupted, or should we say so many Christians who are supposed to be leading a life of godliness, a life of holiness, a life of obedience to God, have become corrupted. And um, there's another word which God uses in the Bible, and it's also called uh, defiled. But defilement is uh, a little bit not as um, uh, strong as uh, corrupt. So we know from what uh, we are reading here that um, starting from Genesis, what uh, did God say? That he looked at the world that he created. Uh, first, uh, the devil corrupted the Garden of Eden uh, when he corrupted man and woman and said that, oh, you know, uh, you can just eat of the fruit and corruption starts uh, from the heart, from the soul, from the mind when we are not willing to follow God's commandment. And so we know that before God uh, wiped the whole world of all the people in the world, one, uh, after Adam sinned, the world became corrupted because all his children born were now in a corrupt world, even though uh, not all of them live uh, led that corrupt life, but then uh, some of them, you know, it means that, well, you have uh, one son obeying God, the other son not obeying. So that meant that uh, it was supposed to be that all of them were supposed to be uh, leading obedient lives, but when one is doing the right thing and the other one is not doing, then it means that there is corruption. So in Genesis 6, 12, God said, and God looked upon the earth, and behold, 
it was what? Corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Why did he see that? Because he thought that people would be obeying his commandment and doing all that he has. But because they did not, you know, uh, they had led and it became so corrupt that he said, well, I can't stand it anymore. I have to wipe the whole world. And that's why uh, Noah, in Noah's time, we know that there was all this corruption, all this thing that uh, was happening. It was just too much that um, the world had become, uh, they were just depraved to the point that they didn't want to do anything. All that they were uh, in, intent in doing is that they just wanted to uh, do the wrong thing. And so I will read a few verses uh, here. And um, and uh, so it says, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted uh, the way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with uh, what? Violence. In those days, yes, violence uh, through them. Uh, said, and uh, behold, I will destroy them uh, with the earth. And then he gave him the instructions of all these things. But why did uh, they were living lives which uh, had become inconsistent to God's word? And so he decided to wipe uh, the whole world and uh, to destroy it. And so when we think about why uh, a Christian's life would be corrupted, it all starts with the devil. What does the devil do? The devil will say that, oh, no, you are too holy. You are living a life of holiness. Uh, calm down a little bit. You know, do a little bit of sin. Enjoy a little bit of sin. Enjoy a little bit of that. And then the mind says, well, yeah, well, no. Uh, God is forgiving. God is doing that. But uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he uh, was teaching in the world, and uh, teaching his disciples, teaching all those who were following him, he says that uh, what happens, it all starts uh, from the mind, from the heart, and then all the bad things, all the bad things that we think, and we know when we think about the um, New Testament, or we think about the Ten Commandments, uh, God says that, oh, uh, you shouldn't kill, but then, uh, we forget that, oh, well, I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do so, uh, then, um, then I must be good. But God said that when you think bad thoughts about your neighbor, about someone else, then you've already committed uh, that sin. And so God says that uh, things that come into our mind, and those things that defile or we should say they will corrupt us because uh, those things come from the heart. And when your heart is filled with corruption, it's filled with sin, it feel, well, you may not call it sin, but say that, well, it's just uh, not, do, so many different things uh, defile our mind and corrupt our mind. And so God is saying that the church at Thyatira, they were involved with things that they were not supposed to be doing. And so... Uh, what are the things that we should do so that we will not get uh, involved with those things that we know uh, will corrupt our mind? And that is that we are to uh, realize that evil communication, where when does it mean evil communication? Or I think when we use the word evil, we are maybe saying that when you have a friend who has bad things, using bad language, using bad things, inviting you to, uh, you know, to see what he's doing and uh, sharing uh, what he's doing, then it means you are corrupting your mind. You know, your mind it will be corrupted one way or the other. So if you have a corrupt friend, a corrupt mind, uh, where he's always, he or she is always uh, doing things which is corrupt, that person also, uh, it means that while you may not. And the, the thing is that, it's always uh, true that a bad person will be a bad influence on a good person or uh, a holy person, even though we know that where well, we say we are holy, we are this, and but when you involve yourself with someone or a society or an environment where there is always corruption, you end up being 
uh, falling for that because you may be saying that, oh, well, I'm good. But then corruption sets in. So 